How is it going, everyone? It's Sam. I've had a lot of people talk to me about Velo 3D recently. Now, this is a new SPAC. It's actually merging with one of the most badass-sounding uh, SPAC names ever, the Jaws Spitfire Acquisition, which is cool. But uh, they're merging. It was just announced earlier this week. A lot of people have asked me to kind of cover this, and I want to walk you through it today. Now, I'll be honest. Like, I haven't... I'm, I haven't made a huge decision on this stock. I haven't like gone super in depth on what they do, but I was just going through it, um, and I just wanted to kind of talk about it with you guys, give you my first opinion uh, opinions on it without digging like super in depth. And I want to hear your thoughts in the comment section. What am I missing, uh, and what do you think about this industry in general? It's an interesting company. Uh, it's one that I I think could do quite well, but. Uh, when I compare it to another company I just bought, I don't think it's as good. But I, I, I want to talk about it because, again, it's pretty rare that you hear about companies that said no to Elon Musk when they want to be acquired, and now they're still going public uh, via SPAC. So I want to talk about it. Again, a lot of people have been asking me about it. If you guys don't mind just hitting the like button first, I really appreciate that. Also, if you guys want to check out the Patreon, you can get access to live streams. I actually talked about this on like a upper tier live stream. And then also there is a link down there to BlockFi in case you want to get your uh, cryptocurrency and interest rate in case you want to get up to 9.3%, I believe is the highest and get a bonus for signing up. You can check out that link down below to BlockFi. Again, like I, Bitcoin in general is going up in price. So it might be a good time to have an account set up if you haven't done that already, just to have it ready. And I think I did a poll the other day and like 50% people don't have any cryptocurrency. This does yield you a nice amount and it pays monthly. So definitely check that out if you are interested in that. But this is just announced again earlier this week. Uh, I believe it says the 25th. So, yeah, just uh, Thursday morning. It specializes in technology for 3D printing of metal, uh, boasting its ability to manufacture previously difficult geometries and forms. So they said no to Elon Musk. Uh, they say here that they the share price jumped following one of the company's execs revealed to CNBC that Tesla... CEO and founder Elon Musk was interested in buying Velo 3D through the tech maker, uh, but they didn't want to sell. So they wanted to buy Velo 3D. They didn't want to sell. So we had an opportunity to take them public. He added that Velo 3D could even get acquired uh, because they are probably the leader in their field in the area that they serve. So this is actually a company that... The ARC, uh, I believe, just took a position, and you can see they bought 733,000 shares. Uh, really interesting. And SpaceX is already a customer of theirs. So the 3D printer's proprietary full-stack 3D printing solution enables the production of mission-critical components for space rockets, jet engines, fuel delivery systems, and energy production with better performance at faster speed and lower cost than traditional methods. So again, we, we already know that ARC has been buying companies like this, 3D printing companies, and we know that they're a big fun, uh, a big fan of Tesla in general. So it makes sense that these things coming together would cause them to want to buy it. So the company's uh, share price is sitting right around $10.70. So they said that it went up a lot, but honestly, it went up to what? ten dollars and seventy cents then came back down and then they came back up a little bit it's not going crazy like specs just aren't going crazy like they were before it's not going to go up to twenty dollars a share on this news however i think over the weekend a lot of people are looking at this maybe a lot of people hear about it like i am looking at it a lot of people had brought it up to me just in the last day or so of the week and now i'm looking at it so maybe that will change if we take a look here investor presentation it's it's an interesting company what they do. So I'll be honest, this is what I want your help with, guys. I with 3D printers, I think that they're great for certain circumstances. Like if you're if you're an engineer, right, and you don't want to send off your prints to someone else or your CAD uh, to someone else and then have to wait for them to make it, maybe they get backed up, they have to send it over to you. Like if you don't want that, if you're at a bigger company like my brother that worked at GM, they had 3D printers and that was just so that they could execute a lot faster. Uh, they didn't have to worry about uh, ex, um, extra companies in there. I think that's great. 
but I don't know how many units they can actually sell at this point because they're the the amount that they can actually make isn't significant I think compared to production lines so that's great like you can you can sell these to a lot of different companies for like testing and stuff like that or just to to get the items quicker for engineers but I don't know how quickly this will grow I think it's one of those things where once it hits it will it will blow up like the industry will do really well if they can get it uh, if they can progress it along further I just don't know how much they can sell right now, which I guess is just something maybe moving forward, it will get better and better. And then, uh, and then it'll be too late. It could be that kind of thing. But I don't know, it's just kind of an interesting uh, problem, I think, because there aren't a lot of end consumers. So we can see the jaw spitfire group here. Uh, Barry Sternlich has had several multi billion dollar public companies, they have them here. And then I didn't really know Matt Walters at all. But uh, he's on there too. Then the transaction itself, they are going to get about $470 million to accelerate growth and strategic opportunities. Now, I don't know what this assumes. Or I don't know what this is. I don't know what they're getting at here. Strategic opportunities, I don't know what that is. Maybe acquiring other companies. It says they, that it also assumes no redemptions by the existing shareholders and transaction expenses of $35 million. So I don't know if they... Uh, if they are going to roll over their ownership or not, it doesn't like sometimes companies will say that, that they're rolling their ownership and that they're going to hold on to it for a certain amount of time. It doesn't look like it says that here. They also say valuation $1.6 billion. So less than some companies have been in the past. I mean, if you look at like Archer, which is ACIC, they're valued at like 3.6 billion. So much less than that. You, you can see the two people that really run the company here. Uh, so they work with several big clients, Honeywell, SpaceX, Lamb Research, all these companies, I guess here. These are the two that I really know right here though. Uh, and then key investors, SpaceX is one of those investors. They will have pretty high compounded annual growth rate. They have a large number of patents. They have high gross margin. Uh, so you can see kind of how they're expecting this revenue to increase. They're expecting a big increase next year. So they're expecting that this will really propel them forward. I don't know what they're going to do. Maybe they'll hire way more salespeople. I don't know. I don't know how they're going to triple uh, and then just level off after that. I'm guessing it's because of the cash infusion. But then like why? I guess it's not technically leveling off. It's like doubling and then doubling then a little bit less, a little bit less. But it's it's a significant decrease from a triple there. Now, Metal additive manufacturing, high interest but low adoption. Premise or promise uh, consolidate complex assemblies containing dozens of parts into one. So that's that's the whole three D printing in a nutshell. Higher performance products, ten times shorter lead time, two x lower cost. So they're saying it's cheaper, uh, and I'm assuming lead time. They don't need as much time to actually produce it. Reality of first generation can't produce required designs. Performance degradation. Uh, degradation too hard to implement but they're saying they have the technology to actually make this work so we'll, we'll move on from there but they have cracked the code of me metal additive manufacturing highly differentiated technology enabling production of holy grail parts beyond pursuit of of am so they're saying that they have different technology they have better technology selling full stack uh, over one million dollars and ARR production solution, unleashing AM adoption in a one hundred billion dollar high value production market. Deep technology, six years, one hundred fifty million dollars of development, uh, protected by forty eight patents. They go through some of what they've done for other companies here, so they go through what they've done for SpaceX. Now this looks pretty complicated. I'll be honest. Uh, so. 22 systems in three years. Uh, interesting. They they go through what they've done for other clients too, but they I think they just wanted to throw that first because everyone knows SpaceX for the most part. They're expecting the whole high-value metals market to increase about 5% compounded annual growth rate, but their high-value metals uh, additive, additive manufacturing market, they assume will increase at a 30% 
compounded annual growth rate. So they're saying that their technology is what's going to grow this, which is interesting. Like they're, they're saying that they are the leaders here. They believe that Velo 3D will enable and alone serve $20 billion of the 2030 market. I'm assuming they're talking about this high value metal market based on what they said above. So they're expecting to serve over half of this market, which I mean, that's a, that's a tall order, but I guess they're pretty confident in that. They're saying these high value parts are the ones that are ideal for this kind of disruption because they're hard to machine. Uh, a lot of jet engines, fuel delivery systems, heat exchangers. Now, obviously, ARK Invest feels like this is a very interesting company. It's worth it's worth investing in. You can see some of the customer base. Um, I don't know if this is actually who they work with or if this is some of the clients that they could work with. From what they show here with the other clients that they had above, I'm guessing these are the ones that they actually work with. I'm just surprised they wouldn't have included like Honda in that first group because I know them a lot more than I know some of these other companies that they threw up there uh, or even Astra because a lot of people know what Astra is now. So I'm surprised that they didn't include that. Now, I, I'm curious how big these 3D printers are because like this thing looks massive. Of course, I guess it could be really small, but I'm really curious like how large these puppies are. It's kind of interesting. So just something to consider. Now, we're going to continue down. They talk about their revenue model at some point. So again, they're they're expecting a majority of their orders this year to be uh, a majority of the revenue to come from booked or pre-ordered. Uh, so I guess that's where they're expecting to increase a lot. Maybe they just want to be a little bit more reserved after that because they can see into 2021. Now you can see how this kind of works. I believe they have these two different re they they have this two different models. They have a pure sale where they pay more up front, so 1.75 million a year, or right up front, and then 120K annual service. So I don't know what goes into this. Uh, I, I'm I'm curious how they can charge as much, unless they just give customer support, and they say, okay, customer support's 10,000 a month, and we'll do whatever happens. Well, like come out if we need to, or something like that. Uh, and then we have this reoccurring revenue model. They'll pay less up front, but then they'll pay three times as much over the years. So it would take about, what, 40 years for this to cross over to make it worth it, um, where if you were going to have it for four years or you were really sure about it, you would rather have this. But uh, And you would have to account for the cost of that capital right up front too, how much that would cost. But uh, that's where you would transition and be like, okay, I actually saved money by going with this pure sale model. So they're expecting the margin to continue to increase. This is how they're expecting CapEx. They're expecting it to be really low. Uh, they're expecting that you can see how they're breaking down the visibility into 2022 with most of this coming from pre-orders already. So that is something that uh, they kind of lay out there explaining what they, what they are expecting this year. Now they had a large increase in 2019 in revenue, but... To be fair, they had only two million dollars in 2018, so a couple big contracts, a couple five million dollar contracts, not even like large, large contracts, 702 percent growth. Uh, you can see that they are expecting this to continue into the future, but they didn't grow that much last year. They could have said maybe it's due to, you know, the pandemic or something. They're expecting a 41 percent growth rate this year. They're expecting to be uh, EBITDA positive by 2023. So just in general, after looking at this company, like I get why people are excited. If you're really bullish on this sector, I get it. Like this is a company that has a lot of star power behind it. It has it has the blessing of SpaceX essentially, which is interesting. Uh, however, I I am comparing it maybe too much to the company I just bought. And I did a video on it yesterday which is a company that already has a 119 million in revenue, I believe. And they're already EBITDA positive. They're already cash flow positive. They're in the space sector. They're a conglomerate of other space companies. And 
I keep on buying it, honestly, because I feel like it's such a good value. It's Redwire. Uh, they were just announced recently, and it's being valued at about a third of this company. Like this is a $2 billion company. The other company is being valued at $700 million now, $750 million. Now, I, I don't know, but I guess if you are bullish on the metal sector, this is great, possibly. But that other company seems like a deal and a half to me, even compared to this company. But if you compare these companies to something like ACIC, and I've talked about ACIC in the past, I actually sold it because I'm, I wanted to reduce risk and I put it into Redwire, another company that I'm really bullish in that's in the same space as ACIC, but already is cash flow positive. And ACIC isn't expecting revenues for four years, three years. So moving some of the money from a riskier asset like that into something that's still growing and already positive cash flow seems like a no brainer to me. But again, we're talking about this company. I think this could be a good company. I'm still doing research on it. Obviously, I just wanted to talk to you guys about it. Let me know what you think about this company down below. Again, I had a lot of people ask me about it. And maybe I just need to compare it to other 3d printing companies, uh, metal companies, but I'm comparing a lot of companies to this red wire right now, because especially if it's kind of in the space of space, if, for example, like the like what would be included in Arc X. I'm comparing a lot of those companies, but I realize that this is slightly different, but that company does own, Redwire does own a 3D printing company. So it's kind of interesting. Again, this is metal, so it's it's different, but uh, I want to hear your thoughts. Thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate it. A little bit different here where I just kind of want to walk you through it, but it's not like an in-depth, I'm buying it or I'm not buying it. This is not why I'm buying it. This is why I am buying it. It wasn't like that. I want to have a more of an open conversation and I want to hear your thoughts. Thank you guys. Thank you for checking out the link down below to Weeble. If you want some free money, some free stocks, just deposit $100. Also, there is that link down there to BlockFi in case you want interest rate on your cryptocurrency or you want to join the Patreon and see why I'm buying and selling. Join 4,000 other people in there and talk with them about different stocks just like this one. Definitely check that out down below. It's a link uh, for the Patreon. Thank you and thank you for hitting the like button and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.